I just really am fascinated by the science of phonology, mm -hmm. and I know it's something very few people know about. So quickly, um, what is phonology? Well, phonology is the seasonal changes in the life cycle events of plants and animals. That's the basic part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And watching the seasonal changes, you know, we've been talking about record keeping mm -hmm. and the importance of it, mm -hmm. but what's the, what is the, I'll say, the organization or the, the whole big body behind the record mm -hmm. keeping? Uh, there's a national phonology network and one of its programs that lets everyone in the community collect information and data um, about phen phenological changes is Nature's Notebook. Well, that sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. It really is. So how do you get started with, with you know, I'll say citing Nature's Notebook? What kind of kicks you off for the season? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, spring is a great time to start making observations. There are hundreds of plants and animals you can choose from to make those observations and submit them. Uh -huh. um, we recommend you choose something that's really close to your house or some place that you visit on a daily basis because when spring starts getting rolling yeah. and all the changes start happening, we want to visit those plants or animals um, a couple times a week just to make sure we don't miss anything. So that you can really observe. So mm -hmm. in your mind, what's the plant or flower that kicks you off? Okay, well, red bud for me. Mm -hmm. I know for Scythia, cherry blossoms, they get a lot of attention, but our native redbud is one of the most interesting and beautiful small trees we can have around, and that's this one right here. Um, it's edible, mm -hmm. it's long-lived, it's beautiful, it has these really great heart-shaped leaves, but the emergence of flower buds and then open flowers is a great observation um, that you can make, and um, I think they're just really precious. Yes, and we're talking about there's Buds, mm -hmm. opening buds, and flowers are some of the observations. Right, exactly. So okay. on Nature's Notebook, that, that stage will be flower buds or flowers. You can also have open flowers at the same time. So those would be two different stages that would be observed here on these red buds I brought in. Well, you know, it's easy to notice the beautiful plants that mm -hmm. are blooming. But what people don't realize is there's a lot going on in our trees right now. Oh, right. And this is just a quick selection of oak trees from my yard and from Lewis Skinner Botanical Garden. And you can see that oak trees are one of those foundational habitat plants. They support hundreds of Lepidopteran species, mammals, and birds. Yes. And they make big changes. But when they're competing against all that color, it's kind of hard to notice them. Exactly. So I will just quickly put a couple of these branches. This is an oak from my backyard. Mm -hmm. And you can see right here that it has buds. And these buds are just breaking. Oh, I can see that. So yes. the, the stage we would call this would be flower buds and flowers, but they're not quite open or elongated enough to be called open flowers. So okay. let me show you one of those. All righty. Okay, this beauty is a willow oak from the garden. Oh, look at um, those cute little leaves. Oh out. my goodness, they're so fabulous. But you can see right here that these long flowers have extended. Mm -hmm. So they've extended there. So yes. they're not kind of short and still compact like I showed you before. So these would be open flowers. And the leaves themselves are not quite open or fully grown yet. So they would be leaf or leaf buds happening on this plant. And my allergies would start screaming right I now. I know. <laughs> and you know, that's another reason that phenology is of such importance to so many people. You need to know when to start taking your allergy meds, when the hay fever kicks in. And when um, to do some gardening chores or when fish are running mm -hmm. and other things like that. So, and, and so you fine. see, this is another type of oak. This right. is the scarlet oak. Mm -hmm. But it is not showing any flowers or flower buds. And the leaf buds haven't broken yet either. Everybody's an individual, mm -hmm. even plants. And oaks are one of the native trees that will hold on to a few of their leaves, mm -hmm. even after most of the leaves on other deciduous trees have dropped. So you can tell oaks and beeches, they're holding on to some of those brown leaves, which is why I was really excited to bring them. I'm gonna share with you the name of the tr leaves are called marcescent leaves. Yes. And it's a fun name to share. You're right. Look at the marcescent yes, leaves. Yes, you're right. So. And this is another oak that I wanted to really show off. This is the southern red oak, and you can see here, this has gone all the way to the stage. We have those flowers open, mm -hmm. elongated, and letting pollen out, but you also have the leaves are fully out of yes. their leaf buds, and you can see the petiole. Yes. So that stage would be leaves open, and from now on, they're going to be growing. Fantastic. So.
Now all these oak leaves do fall off as well as other leaves mm -hmm. and we end up with leaf litter and there's some oh. little treasures in that litter that we don't know about. And we do talk and encourage people to remember to leave some of their leaves, particularly at the base of trees, particularly on oak trees. And let me show you real quick why. We have brought in Luna moth cocoons. Inside, these are actually live, so there's little Luna moth friends right in there, and inside there is a Luna moth that's overwintered in leaf litter. So if I was raking or leaf blowing, I wouldn't you wouldn't know see to protect them. Yes. Here's something else you might see. This, I'm not 100% sure we have the ID, but I found this while I was cleaning up in my garden. Fascinating. Um, I have a couple of thoughts, but if a viewer knows for sure, I would love to know. Mm -hmm. You might also find some manted egg cases. Yes, I found six in my garden this weekend. Do you know which is our native Virginia Carolina manted? Yes, I do. This one here is our native mm -hmm. Virginia Carolina. That's right. We, if you see one of these, you are in luck because you have a native mantis. And don't bring it in the house, no. though. <laughs> because if you bring it inside the house, you're going to trick those insects into emerging from that Uthaca, mm -hmm. the name of the mantid egg name. case, um, early and you'll have hundreds inside your house. Yes. This is a little bit alarming. This would be a China, Chinese mantis mm -hmm. um, and they have become a little bit invasive here and outcompete the Carolina mantid. I have to admit I found they were all Chinese mm -hmm. mantis egg cases. Oh, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Mm. And but moving on. Yeah, finally we have a Cercropia moth. All of these can be easily buried under leaf litter. So easy. So you wouldn't know it. So keep that in mind when you're cleaning up your yard. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, a lot of people call this an umbrella tree. Yes. Big leaf magnolia. And that would be the bud. leaf bud for that. And the leaves are about this. Well, mm -hmm. it's about this big. Yeah, they get even bigger <laughs> than that, absolutely. And I just think they're so fun. Visitors at the garden love to play with those. Well, we got to keep moving along. Okay. So we have all these just emerging. Can we quickly go through these? Sure. I'll quickly go through <laughs> these. Pawpaw. Okay, everybody, this is a, um, this is a native mm -hmm. tree. It's a kind of an understory Let's tree. Let's put it on the, so people sure. can see that one. Understory tree. The phenophase that it's in is flowers or flower buds and you see you'll have an open flower. Mm -hmm. The flower is considered open if you can see the reproductive parts inside. Okay, so this is great. And then one more and this is my quiz question. We have dogwood. I'm going to try and pull it out and put it there for you. So dogwood is another native tree. It's uh, used as food or habitat by almost every part of it can be used. Um, the seeds are toxic to humans, but not to birds. And so what phenophase do you observe on the dogwood? Oh, you know, the flowers have not broken bud yet because the flowers of the dogwood are actually within. These are all bracts or modified leaves. That's right. Well, <laughs> I didn't think I would stump you, but <laughs> that's exactly right. So this one might be tricky, but Nature's Notebook has a full phenophase guide to help you out. To help everyone out. And so there is no guessing needed because they would be able to be, to notice that those um, are not, those are flower buds, but not fully open flowers. So what we do is we need to look to see and observe what ones are open flowers, what mm -hmm. ones even are kind of past open, mm -hmm. and which ones are even in our cone stages, mm -hmm. how they're coming along. And mm -hmm. we need to even watch our, our plants as we do some pruning. Mm -hmm and to be able to recognize these different stages. Mm -hmm. So Laurel, this has been so interesting and so fascinating. Great. And I thank you for bringing all of this in to help explain the various stages of plants so that they can learn to be noticed in more of a, an observational manner. So maybe they'd be in, folks will be interested in starting a nature's I certainly up hope own. so. It's easy enough for anybody to do. We're excited to have more people working and on it. And it's so important because it's shared nationwide. So mm -hmm. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.